Posting consistently on social media is one of the riskiest, most potentially damaging things you can do as an artist. It's become increasingly necessary to be able to make a living as an independent creative, but if you aren't careful, it can and will stifle your artistic growth. And the reason I know that is because it has for mine. In this video, I want to share the three big mistakes that artists keep making when posting on social media, myself included, and how you can learn from these to continue growing as a creative even as you build a following online. And the first of these is the narrow niche problem. This is where you self-censor your art or your creativity because you think that you have to really narrow in to cater to a specific niche. This could be doing oil painting landscapes or gouache portraits. You're only allowing yourself to do one of these because you're afraid that people will follow you for one, see the other, leave, or just stop engaging with your content. And niche is something that is really talked about a lot by social media gurus, and I think they mean this advice very genuinely. Niching down into one specific subject or medium is fine for some artists. Like maybe you're really into just doing one thing, just having one medium, but I have found that a lot of artists tend to be like multi-passionate or interested in a ton of stuff. And really important creative breakthroughs happen when we allow ourselves to experiment, when we create without any expectation, being willing to make bad art, like I talked about a couple videos ago, is really important to be able to grow and really come into your own and find your creative voice. That can never happen if you don't allow yourself to experiment, especially if you are trying to build a following as a beginner or as an intermediate artist. You might think that you have to narrow really deeply down, but I would advise so strongly against that, you should instead think about your target audience. Your niche is you, your art, your experience. Your niche is you as an artist. Your target audience should really guide your content on social media. And that is way more important to figure out. You don't have to have a niche at all if you know who your target audience is. Your target audience might be people like you. Or it could be your ideal customer base, your ideal collector base for your work. You should then think about what kind of person would like your art. What kind of person would want to buy your art? Where do they live? What do they like to do? What are their hobbies? Where do they enjoy spending their time? That might not be on social media. That might be in upscale restaurants, hair salons, cafes, art galleries. You should think about your target audience, and that really is what's vitally important to guiding your marketing. When you are posting on social media, if that's where your audience is, I think it's important to create an expectation of experimentation. Let your audience know, hey, I'm a person. I'm a creative. I'm going to try new things. This place, this profile, this account is going to change and evolve as I do. You might be desperately trying to narrow the art that you allow yourself to make because you want to find an audience, but I think it's really important to seriously consider if that will help you find the right audience. Having a million followers on social media is great, but if they're not interested in the stuff that you're really passionate about creating, that following is kind of useless to you. If they're not going to be supportive of the kind of artwork that you're really passionate about, that you really want to make, if those million followers are there for a thing that you don't want to do anymore, that's not going to work out long term. It's just not sustainable. It's way better to have a smaller following that will follow you everywhere you want to go, support you regardless of what you want to make. And that's really what you want to build, especially if you are a multi-passionate creative. If you're one person, if you're the kind of person that wants to do just one thing that really loves just oil painting portraits, go for it. Do that one thing. Like, pop off, queen. <laughs> Love that for you. But that's not 
everybody. A lot of artists really want to experiment, especially when you are just starting out. It's really important to be able to try new things and find yourself as an artist. And you want the audience that you build to support you in that. Emma Chamberlain, for example, makes videos on literally whatever she wants, but like people don't watch her because she talks about cooking. They watch her because she's Emma Chamberlain, because she's unashamedly herself. And I think that's the kind of audience that you really want. That's the kind of audience that will stick with you. Just having an audience that's really only interested in one type of thing will lead to a whole other host of problems, including the next one, the greatest hits problem. So a lot of creators that go viral early on in their careers will be very open when talking about how it was like the worst thing that could have happened to them. <laughs> Like, they hate it, especially if they're relatively new on the scene. They haven't been posting online for very long. Going viral can be a recipe for disaster, right? Because you now have this huge audience, the majority of your audience, that is only interested in, like, one type of thing from you. They just want to see, like, that one video that went viral over and over again. They just want that same type of presentation, that same vibe, the same subject, same topic. And that's not very conducive to experimentation or finding your voice as a creative. And in that journey to experience that initial like taste of success again, you're going to be overly focused on the numbers and not really focused on finding fulfillment as a creative, on making art that really speaks to your soul, that you're really passionate about. And focusing too much on the numbers is not a good thing. There's a reason that a lot of artists on YouTube talk about how they don't pay any attention to the analytics. And I admittedly am a little bit different from those other artists. Like, I really do like the data and the analytics. But, I mean, I've fallen into this problem a bunch of times where I keep trying to make the videos that are going to perform well and not always making the videos that, like, I'm really interested in making. And sometimes when I do make the videos that I'm really interested in making, they don't perform well. One of the most common critiques that I get on my videos is that I don't talk about or share my art enough, that I share too much like entrepreneurship stuff and social media tips. And I hate these comments because they're right and I don't like it. I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, people really only want the videos where I talk about money, the videos where I talk about business stuff and like Instagram tips or whatever, you know, like how to grow on YouTube. People like that stuff. What they don't like is like, really in-depth storytelling about how to find your creative voice. I made a video that I'm immensely proud of. I thought it was the best video I had ever made. It was like the king of all flops on my channel in terms of like view counts in the first couple of days. It just didn't, it didn't do well. And if I want to be a good YouTuber, I have to make stuff that works. I have to like, you know, follow up and like do whatever and like make the videos that I know are going to do well. But if I want to be a good artist, I have to experiment. And those things, yeah, they can be diametrically opposed pretty often if you aren't careful. And that's a really hard thing to do because like I and a lot of other art YouTubers rely on the money that we make from this platform to pay our bills, to keep the lights on, to like feed my cat, pay for my groceries. And that's a really tricky decision to have to make. And I don't think there is necessarily a super cut and dry answer for every situation. And that brings me to the broader artist to content creator pipeline. So the pipeline works like this. You get an audience, then your job is now to make content. Then you discover that it's easier and sometimes more successful to make content that's value driven, that's focused on helping other artists, sharing info about art business, etc. Then that content just performs better it's easier to make and you are pretty sure that people just don't want to see your art anymore. So you stop posting it. They're not interested. It takes a lot of time to do. And so gradually, because you're a full-time creator now, your life gets busy. You have brand deals to worry about. And slowly over time, you're making less artwork than you did before you called yourself a full-time artist. How does that make sense? I think that dynamic of not making a lot of art when you are a full-time artist happens to a lot of creators, regardless of like the marketing strategy you choose. Like it or not, there is just like a lot of extra stuff that comes with being a full-time creative, like packaging orders, marketing yourself online, like ordering all of the stuff, designing merch, like making everything, like paying taxes. That just takes a lot of time. And 
if art is just your hobby, you are probably going to make more art in the long run if you can, you know, do it consistently. But that being said, there are solutions to both the greatest hits problem and the overall artist to content creator pipeline. Let's talk about them. Solution number one is to go cold turkey. Going cold turkey is to stop posting altogether the type of content that's getting views or attention, but that you don't want to make a lot long term. You just stop doing it. Like it's just, it's done, it's over. This happens if you were not really passionate about it in the first place. Like maybe you draw a celebrity once and then it goes viral and now you're suddenly drawing celebrities all the time, even though you hate drawing celebrities. Like that's, that's going cold turkey. Okay. Like you just stop doing it altogether. You're not interested anymore. You hard pivot to the content that you really do want to make, that you are passionate about. This is often what happens when people are really burnt out, when they're just really tired, when they genuinely don't like the stuff that they're making, but it comes with some pretty severe disadvantages. If you are a full-time creator, there are financial repercussions to doing that, right? Like your revenue is going to take a hit. People that do this often experience a massive dip in engagement and in their audience and, like I said, in revenue. That's going to have pretty severe financial implications, especially if you do do this full time and you rely on that money to pay your bills. Despite those drawbacks, it could still work out. Like, you're going to have some kind of audience left over that is interested in stuff that you really do want to make. And maybe that, like, subset of people will help you build a new community. And it's way better than starting from zero, for sure. You're probably going to be able to succeed way faster, but you might never get back to the numbers that you had before. That's maybe okay. You don't have to have like millions of followers to be able to really make this work. And you can leverage that following to open up other doors, like, you know, get into galleries, get into art shows, build relationships with people in the industry. You know what I mean? Like, there are tons of doors that are open to you, but it's a thing to consider that your revenue is going to take a hit if you do a cold turkey approach and really hard pivot back to stuff that you really do want to make. So the second solution to this is to have two channels. If you really are genuinely passionate about the stuff that you were making that's getting views, like myself, for example, like I like the business content and I like the art vlogs, but they tend to not work together on the same channel for some reason. I don't know why, but whatever reason, they don't. One answer is to break this up into two channels, right? You're giving each type of content the space that it might really need to succeed on its own. Like, one is not being weighed down by the other. For a lot of people, this really could be the best of both worlds. If, you know, you're concerned about your two interests not merging well together, the answer genuinely might be to just make two different accounts just post you know gouache portraits on one oil landscapes on the other it could totally work if you really do want that niched approach it could be totally fine it could really work out if you are equally passionate about both that's important because if you're not you're going to eventually resent one of those channels and this second channel thing is something that I've been considering for a long time. I really do want to do both. I like the business stuff. I like the vlogs and art stuff. But for whatever reason, they just tend to not work on one channel. And I don't entirely know why. Like, it could be something that I'm doing wrong, frankly. Like, it could be the editing style is too boring. I should tighten things up. Whatever. Maybe I need to work on my storytelling. It's hard to say. Like, maybe the answer really is to just work on the type of stuff that's not performing well for you and like workshop it a little bit, try and figure out how you can make it perform better actually. But having two channels could be also the way to go maybe. As I was thinking about this, as I was thinking about like having two channels, I kept having this like intrusive thought, this like feeling of impending doom of like what's gonna happen on the day where I stop having social media marketing tips? What's gonna happen when I run out of topics to really talk about, is that ever going to happen? Like, I don't know, right? Like, am I, am I trapping myself inadvertently in the narrow niche problem without even realizing it? It's totally possible, right? Like, and furthermore, if I do post on two separate channels and like split my content up, does that mean that 
my business stuff will feel less genuine, less relatable, less believable because my art isn't there to back it up. So maybe the answer is to just post it on one channel. Just say like, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like I'm an artist. I'm a creative. Like I'm a person. I'm not a marketing and entrepreneurship tips machine. Like I'm a I'm a real human being. I started this because I wanted to share my dream to become an artist and what I learned along the way. And somehow it drifted away from that to become more about chasing the algorithm and doing better. And like the data is important. It's a thing that I should care about, but it shouldn't necessarily drive all of my decisions. I should be able to experiment and I should want to build an audience that's interested in watching everything that I want to make. So I ran a poll and 60% of you guys, over 60, I think close to 70, said that you wanted to see everything on one channel. You wanted all of it right here. And we're going to do that. We're going to see how it works. If turns out that you guys want things on two separate channels, then I will do that. But I'm going to give it a couple of months. We're going to see how it goes and I'll report back. I'll tell you how it went. Maybe the right answer is really to split things up. It's hard to say. I think it's just like important to realize that you genuinely do not have to have everything figured out right away. It's okay to make mistakes, to grow, to change, to split things up. Like it's fine. You know, like it's really not the high stakes. You're going to be okay. Being an artist on social media is hard and you are bound to make mistakes. And there are a lot of things that you have to watch out for. So let me know what you're struggling with about social media in the comments. If you really are interested in seeing a video that I am extremely passionate about, that I am so proud of making, I highly recommend that you watch it. It's this video right here. It's all about art style and it's a very different take on every other video on the topic and why art styles really aren't what you think they are. So we have a great rest of your day. Make sure to subscribe, I guess, if you want to, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.